Welcome to Find the Way. I'm Ashley Sherbino, and I'm here in the studio with Dr. Mike Sherbino and Dr. John Radford. Glad to be back here with both of you. And this is a really exciting time for many people. It is exciting, Ashley. It's, it's a week till Christmas. Yeah. Can you believe Did that? you get my present yet? Well, the question, have you got <laughs> mine? You know, if you really love me as a, a daughter should love her father, the old man. John, have you working on that truck for me? Yeah, no, I'm working away, Mike. It uh, always one comes, more year. <laughs> it always comes back to the truck. I am so glad that people have joined in with us today. It's just going to be an incredible program because we're talking about the subject that everybody wants. And what's that? Everybody wants peace. I just want a peaceful Christmas where everyone gets along. Right? Where everyone gets along. Yeah. Well, that's where duct tape comes in. Okay. <laughs> right. but we're not allowed to say that on the air, are we? No, that's right. No, Donald Trump can say those things and get away with it. But if I tweet those things, I am going to be in trouble. Yeah. Before we unpack this whole subject of peace, John, I have to ask you the same question as last week. Tell us a favorite Christmas memory, another one. I think just sitting around the table and having fun. Um, uh, for me, I've always liked the idea of putting those funny hats on your head and putting those Christmas crackers. I just love that. So that's, that's a good memory. We'll try to get one for you for next week. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, what about you? What, what's your? I know what your memory is as a kid. You know which one it is. Every year we were always after my dad to get us a bigger and better Christmas tree. Mm. And so, you know, it started about 9 feet, went to 12. Then I think we got a 14-footer. But... We reached the max, the top, the day the dump truck came down the driveway with a 19-foot <laughs> Christmas tree. Okay, we had an A-frame home. Let me explain that to our people. <laughs> to fit it in, right? <laughs> but, but my dad, you know, very creative, made a great stand. He took a garbage pail, put a dryer... Five, five bags of cement, 250 pounds of cement in the garbage pail to stick the tree in. I'm thinking these girls are never going to complain again. About a tree. And I wanted peace. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have seen the horror on my mom's face when he started tying rope to the top of the tree and nailing it to the hardwood floor <laughs> to hold the thing in place. Listen, it was the talk of the town. It's still the talk of our Christmas times. So A great memory. That's and actually, you know, there's so much more funny parts we could say about that story. But I want to encourage our listeners today, before we break for a song, to be intentional this week in building some fun memories mm. uh, into your Christmas. Despite whatever it is you're going through, you can be intentional in what you do and how you plan things out. So we're coming back to the subject of peace, but before we do that, listen to this beautiful song, O Holy Night by Josh Groban. O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long In sin and error pining Till he appeared And the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For
for the slave is our brother, and in his name all the Welcome back to Find the Way, and you can find us online at findtheway.faith. John, thank you so much for being here in the studio with us, and uh, I want to turn it over to you, Mike, who you're going to bring us a great message on peace. Well, Ashley, uh, you know, last week we talked about hope. Next week on Christmas Day, we're going to talk about the whole subject of joy, mm-hmm. and, and I can hardly wait for that one, but to get to the joy, you have to have peace in your heart. And one of the things that is highlighted by the Christmas season is that none of us enjoy, you ready for this, waiting. <laughs> the temptation is to get frustrated, isn't it? Because we're a generation that's in a hurry. If you're a child, you wait in expectation for Christmas Day and you want it to hurry up. And for those of you who have to cook the meal, you wait in dread for uh, 20 or 30 relatives to come through the door to consume in 20 minutes a meal that took you two days to prepare. And not the least is disinfecting the house and cleaning cobwebs that have mysteriously appeared since last year when you cleaned. I don't know. Do you have to clean cobwebs more than once or twice a year? But in the season of hope and joy, many of these things that we get so anxious about rob us of our peace. And it's true that you can't think of Christmas without remembering the waiting aspect of a woman named Mary who is great with child, the Bible says. Christmas is all about pregnancy and waiting. And uh, if you knew my story, you would know that I'm married to a wonderful lady by the name of Terry, and we have five girls. And what that means is that I'm fully certified to make a male observation about women waiting for the baby to come around the eighth month. And things, folks, are not all that peaceful. And uh, when I discovered that my wife was going to have our fifth child, it was at that point that I knew I had to destroy the talk I used to give on family planning. But apart from <laughs> all that, it's going to be 22 years this Christmas that uh, we decided to tell our four daughters that there was another one on the way. And the memory that I have, Ashley, is that when I shared that news, you were just so, you were about 11 at that time, and you're big into sports, and we had a huge hill that you could toboggan down. When we said that we we're going to have another baby, you went white in the face. Ashley, you looked at us in horror and said, oh no, mom's not going to be able to go tobogganing this year or skating. I'm going to have to wait a whole year. And then you got down on the floor and between sobs, you banged on the floor (laughs) and said, how could you let this happen? How could you let this happen? Well, no one has five kids. Yeah, well, anyways, I looked at your mother at that point and said, you know, she's got a good point. How did this happen? But this is far too much information for national radio. Anyways, uh, so you can pray for us as we talk about peace today. But today's reminder, you can't get away from the Christmas story without realizing that waiting and wanting can steal your peace. It's all about a a mother waiting for a child to be born. It's about a world waiting for a child to be born. And suddenly when that baby is born, the angels are just 
with breathless expectation. They're just exhilarated with the fact, and the shepherds come into the story, and they're enthralled with it. And we're going to look into that next week. But at this moment, we back up. We back up because sometimes, and that sometime could be today, that your peace has been robbed from you because you've been waiting for something. You've been longing for something. You've been anxious about something. And I want to direct you to a key truth of scripture that can be an anchor post for your life. Because in the book of Isaiah 55 verses eight and nine, we hear Isaiah speaking on behalf of the Lord when he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And then in Corinthians 1 verse 9, there's an incredible verse that helps us to, again, anchor our hearts so that we have peace. And the Bible says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And as we think of those two scriptures that are anchor points, we come to the amazing passage found in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, which I just love to teach from every Christmas. And and it's a reference about Mary. It's a reference about Joseph. It's a reference about the whole world waiting. But it says this, when the set time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the adoption to sonship. And maybe you didn't catch all of that or those words didn't make a whole lot of sense. But let me focus on a phrase. It said, when the set time or the right time had fully come, God sent his son, Jesus. And when we read this passage, we quickly realize that the world had been waiting for a Messiah. They wanted one who would come and solve the problem of world peace. For the Jews, it would mean freedom from the dominion of the Romans. They had waited and they had waited. And the last wait had been 400 years of silence since the prophet Malachi had made us prophecy that the Messiah would come. Do you have a problem waiting? Because the Jews had a problem waiting. They've been waiting for 400 years. And and I've often paused, why did Jesus come 2,000 years ago and not 1,500 years ago? or 2,500 years ago. And sometimes life is filled with perplexity and we don't understand. But faith in God gives us the choice to relax, believing that his timing is always important. Let me say that again. Faith in God gives us the choice to relax, believing that his timing is always perfect. Years ago when I was studying in seminary, my professor, a man by the name of Haddon Robinson, shared with our class Uh, about one of the wealthy givers to the seminary, people who had supported that school. And her name, you probably heard of it, was Mary, you ready? Mary Rockefeller uh, of the Rockefeller line. And the story was he shared about a limousine who came to pick her up to take her to the airport. And she was traveling that day with a younger woman who was not used to being with the upper class that the Rockefellers were a part of. And as traffic got heavier, the young woman spoke to Mrs. Rockefeller, expressing her fear that they would be late for the plane. And she said, uh, Mrs. Rockefeller, you know, I'm concerned we're not going to make it through the traffic. And you hear the anxiety and the tension building. And then Mary Rockefeller said words to the effect that she should just relax. Mm. Because she said, the plane will wait for us. She said, after all, I own the plane. <laughs> it's a whole different perspective. And you see, we can relax when, we are, when our faith is in the Lord. Regardless of your situation today, you can relax. The Christmas story teaches us that God sent his son at the perfect time. It says, when the time had fully come. What does that exactly mean? Well, why did God pick that date approximately 2,000 years ago? And why not sooner as opposed to later? And possibly you found yourself saying that to the Lord. Lord, why now? Why didn't you come to my rescue earlier? There's a story in the Bible of two sisters, Mary and Martha, whose brother died. And they said, Jesus, if you'd only come sooner, our brother wouldn't have died. In other words, many times we say, God, why didn't you work things according to my time? That's why the passage says when the time had fully come. In the Greek language, it was a picture of a jug being filled to the brim, right up to the top. Every, just every last drop, kind of like when we were kids and we like to torment our mother. John, you probably didn't do this, but I confess. <laughs> you know, I'd fill the water glass right up to the top. Not a quarter of an inch, but right, to, you could almost see it cresting at the top. And that's what it means. And not until the last drop of water was in it would God send his son. 
Well, why did God wait so long? And what do we learn from that? You see, in Isaiah 49, it says, this is what the Lord says, in the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of my salvation, I will help you. But there are reasons why God's timing was so perfect. Politically, Rome was in charge and Roman law meant safety and control. There was good communication and transportation for the trip to Bethlehem. And there was a spirit of toleration finally in the world of being open to new ideas. Greek was the common language and communication was good. Socially, the modern age was upon the world. And while there might not have been microwaves or hydro bills, they did know the comfort and luxuries that few had experienced up to that point. But in the midst of all their comforts and luxuries, historians will tell you that the home and family were falling apart. There wasn't peace. People were even dissatisfied with their entertainment. They'd become sick of the gladiator fights. Intellectually, there was an emphasis on education. And this undermined people's faith in many gods. And the only answer was found in Christianity. Morally, the sense of sin was almost non-existent. It was do whatever you need to do to be fulfilled. And the goal was to have one child and kill or abort the rest. And strangely, though, people were bored and without hope. Religiously, there was doubt that the afterlife actually prevailed. And while emperor worship was common, people were looking for a man to be their savior. Hello? God's timing was perfect. You know, as I reflect on all those things, I find comfort in knowing that God is orchestrating the details of his son's birth to be at the very best time. And if he was doing that, then I can rest in the fact that everything that happens in my life is part of his plan. He's the coordinator that I can trust and I can relax when I realize that he doesn't just own the plane, but he also owns the airport. I can relax in his peace and we can rest in peace when we know about our redeemer. You see, God invites us to rest in his presence and rest is likely something most people don't get enough of throughout the year, but especially at Christmas And when that happens, we become pretty irritable. And it's hard to rest if you have problems, John, or Ashley, if you're in a crisis or when things seem out of control. And if that's you today, then I want to encourage you by reminding you that your greatest need has been taken care of. And that need is for a Savior. And so think about this. If the Savior took care of your greatest need, can he not take care of your need for money, your need to get through this health crisis, your need to find peace as you deal with family or illustrations. I want you to know that just like oftentimes I would piggyback my daughters, you know, up the stairs at night when it was time to go to bed or up a long hill. So our heavenly father invites us to climb onto his back so that he can carry us and know as Paul, when he wrote this book, it says that we now have the rights as his sons, sons and daughters who have been loved by Jesus. And so God's peace can invade our lives when we trust him with all the little pieces of our life, knowing that his time is perfect, that we can rest in him. And may I invite you today to ask him through his Holy Spirit to supernaturally invade your life. And if you do that by simply saying, Lord Jesus, will you come in to my life right now? You can know his peace which is beyond comprehension, but it is there for you right now. So why don't you pray with me this simple prayer, and then John and Ashley are going to come back and and talk more about the subject of peace. But why not pray with me right now? Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to fill me with your peace that passes all understanding. You know the situation I'm dealing with. You know how helpless I am to address it. So please come, even now, that I can walk in your peace. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, that was a great message on knowing and understanding peace. But I think something that we even picked up from the message is that waiting and wanting is so often something that steals our peace. Isn't it, John? It really does. Because in that waiting and wanting, I miss the moment. I miss what's going on for me right now or for us right now in our lives right now. Is that because we're looking too much to the future? I think so. If you think as a little child where we on a journey and, and they're asking mom or dad or whoever they're with is, so are we there yet? Are we, are are we there yet? Because there's, there's a beauty in that. And that was the hope we were talking about last week, right? But, 
But there's also, we miss the moment um, uh, of where we're in right now because we're hoping for something different. We're wanting that different. But I have God's a number of friends with cancer right now. Not yeah, Sorry yeah. to interrupt, but yeah. they have cancer and that seems to be the, kind of the worst thing that can happen. But they're looking down the road to when they get the all clear. And that's so much like life. You know, we're in the midst of a crisis and we're looking down the road to when everything's better. How do we live in the moment, John, with peace? And Because sometimes we don't get the all clear. That's the reality as well, right? So, so yes. So how do we do it? And I think, first of all, God's saying, I'm there with you. Um, you don't have to be in a different place. Um, I meet you right there where you are right now. So, so God comes to us. We don't need to go there or be there somewhere else to, in fact, experience that. I, I, I just go back to a story, which I just love, uh, about the Second World War, uh, sorry, the First World War in the Western Front. So the, the armies had dug in. Uh, many hundreds of thousands of men had been killed in that battle. And it was on Christmas Day where uh, the exact events is, is uncertain as to exactly what triggered it. But the men started to clamber out of the trenches they were in across this terrible no man's of barbed wire and people's bodies because you couldn't get there of the, the, because of the war going on, to, to meet each other. So you had German and Allied tr- uh, troops crossing over and exchanging personal uh, gifts, little p- wow. treasures they were carrying in their pockets. And often there were photographs of loved ones or, or something. They'd take buttons off their uniforms and exchanging them. Right? And I had a, an uncle linked to our family who was part of that. Uh, he was part of the... Uh, that that war um, as a little child, I remember him talking about it. It's just just beautiful, uh, and there it is. So in that in the midst of a circumstance, what were they longing for, John? What do you think? Uh, I mean, think about we were talking last week about home, right? We were talking about they were longing for their homes for sure. But they were but in the midst of all of that, they wanted to experience something that was kind of normal uh, and, and peace. They wanted peace. And peace isn't anything, but to act on that inner sense. So in that moment, it's a great example of what you were talking about in God's message here, Mike, about um, we don't have to wait. There is this moment right now is the time, it's the opportunity. Let's use it. And so they did uh, in this most bizarre, amazing way. So just one little story uh, in a crazy situation. And so if we, if we can do that there, we can do that in any circumstance, right? We can actually find that peace. What I love about it is what, what the Bible is saying, what the story is saying, and it's through so many themes and pages in the Bible. It's saying that peace, it's that inner peace and that peace that passes all of our understanding. And God understands it, but we don't. It, it is an inner peace. It's, it's how I find peace. So often we look for a peace in what surrounds us. Uh, and if only my circumstance were different, if only they or he or them did this or that, or if I could only achieve that. But the reality is we are where we are uh, in, in this moment. And for those around us, um, we are where we are. So if we can in this year, uh, this Christmas, Imagine if we could do that. We could actually just truly just be thankful for where we are um, with nothing different. Uh, That is peace in a way. I think about what you're saying and peace is, it's a posture of the heart. It's a part of the soul. It's when your identity is linked to something that's greater, this is what you're picking up on. You can have that inner peace. Then your circumstances aren't defining what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you look at waiting for Jesus and for the birth and 400 years of silence, like that is crazy. Mm. But really, there could be peace because this was the promise that was made back in the garden and now it's going to be yeah. fulfilled. Yeah. So our hope, coming back to last week, it's built on something greater. And so therefore we can actually have peace in the midst of everything. And, and Mike, you were talking about in that theme, uh, actually Mike was talking about waiting, right? Mm. And so... Uh, what I love about the waiting story in this one is uh, we are all waiting for something. We're all waiting for, for something better. We are, we are waiting. We are expectant and waiting. And just for the record, I don't like waiting. I know. <laughs> I, and who does, right? No. Uh, often uh, think about the, when you're in a situation where you don't know the future exactly. One of the prayers, or we don't know how, uh, what's going to happen. One of the prayers, and, I, and just asking people through my life is what are they thinking? What are they praying? They'll say, They'll ask God, when is this over? 
right? It's the waiting. So, so when is this done? Yeah. When is it? When is the next thing on, right? And I, I, what I love about this message is God is saying, I don't. Uh, maybe we don't know when it's over, um, but right now we let's not miss the moment of being together. Uh, and just for myself, let's not miss this because God is meeting us, is coming to meet us right now where we are. I sat this couple of weeks ago with a dear friend of mine as he passed away. And it was interesting, his wife, as we were all gathered in the room and we knew we were in the final moments, mm. what she said was, I don't want to miss these moments. Mm. Mm. She didn't want to even live with the fear and the anxiety of what was to come. And most likely it was that he was going to die and he mm. did. But she said, I want to live here and have, and I have peace in these moments right now. And I, That's that beautiful. just, it spoke to me, yeah. but it, it spoke to me so much because we knew we had, we know we have something greater. Mm-hmm. We knew even for Jack that he had something greater, that he had a home, that he was going home. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the only way we can ever get there. John, you know, as I think of what Ashley said, and mm. that's such a powerful end of the story. Yeah. Like we all need to go that way. And, uh, and I know Jack's wife, Heidi, who said those words and, you know, just a profound example of her faith in Christ. Mm. But talk as we wrap up the show today, a practical thing for families who are facing a situation at home where there's, it's not peaceful. Mm. And you- this is a society where we have probably the most accounts of anxiety and stress, right? Yes. And now yes. this is the season of that. Yeah. Yeah. So t- what do we do? So, what, so, would it be, what would you say to somebody? So part of it is, first of all, don't run from it. You know, d- don't run from where you're at. I, no, right now I am anxious. Um, so just to acknowledge that in your heart. Um, but in a way, God's saying it's quite simple. Just give it to me. Um, I'm there. I've got it. So if we can not run from it, it's so easy we want to run from it. I, mean, I love your, your your story of your friend, right, in in his death. And we can so want to run from it. And God's saying, no, stay there. I'm with you. So so part of the anxiety is to to not run from it, just acknowledge it and invite God into it. I know what I do in, in, when I'm in that place. I just say, I have a very simple little thing. I say, I say Lord, you got this. You got this. Um, and it, it, for me, it's, it's, it's that simple. It's just the, uh, the trigger point. It's yeah. that simple yeah. prayer. Mm. Lord, you have this. And so maybe that's a good place as we uh, segue today and we get ready as to head down this final week towards Christmas to say, Lord, you've got this. Mm. I mean, he did provide the Savior. He did provide the solution. And as you're listening here to Find the Way, we are so glad you've joined us today. Um, we're facing a situation where we're having to say, Lord, you've got this. And uh, if you go to our website and click on the partner spot, there's a place where you can share in the financial costs of this ministry. But a huge door of opportunity is opened up to us. And uh, as you know, there's not a lot of Christian programming that comes from Canada. Most of it comes from the States. But we are being invited to go five days a week in two cities right now. We know it will spread. Would you first of all pray for us that we'll have wisdom to know if this is the right time when we're to take this step of faith? And then we would also encourage you as listeners that perhaps if you want to support us at this Christmas time, that you might want to do that. More than anything else, we want people to hear the message of God's hope as we talked on last week, this week on His Peace. And next week, John and Ashley are going to be back with us again as we unpack the incredible story of joy. You can find us at findtheway.faith. I'm Mike Sherboneau. And we just want to wish you God's best at this Christmas season.